Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Okay, so a few days ago I made a really interesting video on seeing if I can make an open world game using a bunch of really useful tools. Then in the comments someone asked, could you take this game and convert it into multiplayer in a few weeks? I was pretty confident that this could be done in a few hours, not a few weeks. Once again, thanks to using some really awesome, very helpful tools. I'm actually currently working on my own Steam game, Dinky Guardians, and it is using Network for Game Objects, which is Unity's multiplayer solution, so I'm quite familiar with it. By the way, go ahead and add the game to your wishlist. So I figured rather than just entering that comment, I would actually try to do it and see if it really is as easy as I thought. Here's how that went. And by the way, the tools that I use in making that open world game, those are only on sale for two more days, so if you need anything, get it quickly. So I opened up the project and started off by installing the Netcode for Game Objects package. Then based on how the tool works, I installed the simple network manager. Then I added a client network transform on the player in order to synchronize the movement. I also set up a network animator on the player visual in order to synchronize the animations. Then I set up the player prefab to spawn it automatically. I edited the player script in order to ignore any logic not from the owner. Also added the same logic to disable the camera on objects that were not the owner. I added some basic testing netcode buttons to start host and start client. Then I made the build. And look at that, in just a few minutes I got multiplayer working perfectly. Awesome. The players do look quite a bit silly with just their arms. That's why in first person multiplayer games, usually you have to have both a first person perspective as well as a third person visual animation. But for this quick prototype, making it look quite silly is actually a plus. Just like the other video, this once again shows the power of using awesome tools. Making multiplayer games used to be insanely difficult. Personally, I really remember trying to add multiplayer to my very first Steam game, Survivor Squad. Adding that was really difficult. I remember suffering quite a lot trying to get that working. Whereas right now, in literally just a few minutes, I get the basics fully working. But at the same time, that is really just the absolute basics. Only the basic movement is being synchronized. So basically, we still need to synchronize all of the other data. Starting off with one of the important mechanics that I made for that game, which was the spawning of the plane. In the single player version, I made the plane and the player as separate game objects. But in multiplayer spawning two player objects, that is a little bit tricky. It can be done, but it is a bit tricky to manage. So in order to simplify, I just included the plane directly inside of the player prefab. That way I only need to enable or disable game objects, there's no need to spawn anything else. For syncing the movement is the same thing as the player on foot, just add a client network transform and everything already works. Once again, I made it to only run the logic on the owner. I added some logic to synchronize the spawning and the despawning of the various visuals. And with a quick test, yep, there's the plane already working perfectly. One player can spawn a plane, the rest one can see it perfectly. Okay, so far so good. By the way, here you can see a fun thing of how game dev is really all about smoke and mirrors. Look how the plane seems to be insanely fast from the point of view of the pilot, but from the point of view of the player sitting on the floor, for that one it doesn't really seem like the plane is actually moving that fast. The super simple trick to make something look really fast is just to use a really wide FOV. Just that one change alone really gives it a really nice sense of speed. So that's just a simple tip if you're making some speed based games. It's the exact same trick that I used in my own drag racing minigame. Anyway, so with that the plane is synchronized perfectly. Another thing we need to sync are the projectiles. Again, this is really simple, the projectiles are really just prefabs. So all it takes is really just making a server RPC in order to spawn them, since again, all the server can spawn objects. Then I modify the prefab to once again add a simple network transform component. I also synchronize the hit particles. Once again, the same thing, just a server RPC in order to spawn them on the server. And with that, yep, everything already works. So all the players can fire projectiles, all of the other ones can see it, and all of the particles, everything works perfectly. It generally is really impressive just how simple it is to synchronize things in multiplayer nowadays. You just had a few components, write a little bit of code, and everything already works perfectly. So the next task was synchronizing the enemies. These are, once again, pretty simple. It just requires adding a network transform to synchronize the transform, a network animator for the animations. I edited the enemy script in order to make it only run the logic on the host. And once again, just with that, everything already works. I can look from the client, look at the host, and there it is, the host walking around, attacking and being attacked by the enemy. Then for synchronizing the castle heart, since the projectiles are already only running on the server, everything is already perfectly synchronized. The heart is already taking damage from any player anywhere in the world. So really all it takes is just a server and client RPC in order to trigger when the castle dies. Just doing that in order to trigger the animation on all the clients and yep, there it is, everything works. All right, so here I've got the game and I've got four players connected. And yep, as you can see, everything works. So I've got all the players, so all of them are synchronized, all of them are seeing the projectiles being fired. I can shoot with this one and yep, they all see those projectiles. Now I can try spawning a plane and jump into it. And there you go, I'm on the plane, and yep, the other players are also seeing my plane, so whoosh, going right through there. Yep, everything is perfect. Now I have to say it is quite difficult to control four players at once, but yep, everything is indeed working. 
Let's finally just attack the Castle Heart. And if there you go, all of them play the animation and the Castle Heart is destroyed on all of them. So yep, there it is. Everything works. Everything's synchronized. Once again, the answer to the question of the title is exactly the same one as it was in the previous video. Using all of the awesome tools that exist nowadays, yep, it is indeed possible for a solo in developer to make both a open world game and make it multiplayer. I think in the end this took me maybe 4 to 5 hours, so definitely not weeks. And most of the time was actually not necessarily spent on the multiplayer, just based on re-architecting the single player, since when I made the single player version, I made some assumptions that only existed one player, so I used a bunch of singletons and a bunch of things that always assumed only one player exists, so I had to refactor a bunch of code regarding that. In terms of adding the multiplayer itself, that part was really super quick. Although again, part of the reason why it was super fast is because I'm extremely familiar with this tool set. It's what I'm using for my upcoming Steam game, so I'm used to working with this tool set every single day. If you want to learn how to make multiplayer games, check out my free complete course. It's a 7 hour course which covers how to use this tool, Netcode for Game Objects, and goes through the making of an entire game in quite a lot of detail. Learn how to use network variables, custom network behaviors, how to send and receive server and client RPCs, how to synchronize custom data and so on. I'm really pleased with how the course came out, it won't really teach you how to make multiplayer games. And also the assets that I used to make my open world game, those are still on sale for just two more days. And same thing on the Synthi store. If you need some low poly assets, this sale is also ending on Wednesday. So if you need anything from these two, go ahead and check it out quickly. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.